who got her PhD from Durham University, then spent the next few years working in engineering, chemistry and physics departments around the country. And she worked on designing biosensors. Then in 2013, she decided to complete a master's degree in e-learning at the University of Edinburgh. And she's been there ever since as an education researcher. And Anna's particular interests are the use of technology in large lecture theatre classes, but with a focus on science education. So I'm just going to share Anna's slides. OK, Anna, you should be able to take control. Yeah, I can't see my... Oh, I can now. Yeah. OK. Um, I'm just going to send your poll. So we're starting off Anna's with a little poll in the chat feature, if you're able to access it. Um, you can vote That's more than once. Anna, over to you. Right, thank, thank you very much, Catherine, and hello, everyone. Um, so in this session, what I want to do is um, convince you that it's worth considering um, text-based communication um, interviews for when you're thinking about doing qualitative interviews. Um, you, there's a poll, you can see it. Um, feel free to, uh, to start uh, responding to that. So this is just to see how many people use text chat um, in various different aspects of their lives, from talking to friends and families, their social life, and, and also for, for work type um, activities. Um, so I think one of the really interesting thing that, things that's come out of the pandemic is the fact that we have sort of started to reevaluate how we do teaching and how we do research. Uh, and it's no longer the case that we have to say, right, you, you, research interviews have to be done face to face. Um, so I've actually been doing um, interviews at a distance for uh, quite a few years now. Um, partly because I have an energy limiting chronic health condition and also partly because I interview people who are doing who are often distance learning students. So they uh, they're all over the world anyway. Um, and for these sorts of projects, I often use a range of interview techniques. So I have been doing um, interviews on video conferencing, on um, on the phone sometimes, on uh, text, uh, instant messaging, sometimes through email. Um, and what I want to do in this session is sort of talk through some of the advantages that there are for uh, doing text-based messaging, uh, text-based interviews, some of the disadvantages and some of the difficulties that you face and how to overcome those. Um, and I'm just looking at the poll and seeing excellent responses. Thank you very much. Um, so what we'll do in this session is we will I'm going to talk a little bit about what text-based interviews are and how they fit into the range of text-based uh, of qualitative interviews um, and then we'll split into breakout groups uh, and anyone who wants to is willing and wants to to participate can um, have a go at doing a text-based interview either as an interviewee or an interviewer and then we'll come back together and we'll talk about the uh, experiences that you've had what's worked what's difficult um, any questions that you might have um, and then uh, finally I will show some of my examples from text-based interviews that I've done which show some of the difficulties um, and some of the um, things that have uh, that have worked and how I've overcome them. So let's have a little look at the chat, uh, uh, the, uh, the poll. So that's really interesting. Um, a large percentage of people have used text-based methods to chat to friends and family and to work colleagues. No one has done a job interview and that doesn't surprise me because uh, higher education tends not to do interviews like that, but it is increasingly common in, in some types of industry, particularly in industries where text based communication is really a, an important part of the job. Uh, and it also means that people don't need to take time off work necessarily. They can sort of do the interview at the same time, which is um, might seem quite strange. Um, quite a few people have talked to a company that way. Um, and some, so 16% chatted to, to students. Um, right, thank you very much for that. And feel free to use the text chat as we are, um, as we're going through the interview. Through the interview, through the, uh, through the session. Right. I, oh, I've lost control again, hold on. Right, so what I want to start off by doing is just thinking about what are, what do we mean by text-based interviews? Um, so in the title, I talk about email interviews. I've done these much, much more rarely, only a couple of times. 
that tends to come under the heading of sort of asynchronous type um, communication. So you're obviously um, interacting at a different time um, to to the to the participant. There are some key advantages. So if you're talking to someone who's got very poor internet connection, or maybe they're traveling, or maybe you couldn't find a time when you could both talk, um, you know, communicate at the same time, then that's a really useful way of, of doing an interview. Um, however, I found it really hard to uh, build any sort of real connection with the person that I was talking to uh, and because we're so bombarded by emails these days it felt really intrusive to keep emailing uh, with new questions with follow-up questions um, so most of the text-based communication interviews I've done have been through a variety of instant messaging um, and they tend to be synchronous they're not guns in the uh, they're not necessarily um, synchronous. Uh, when I message my, my mum, it's often, you know, a couple of days before she responds. However, they are generally set up as, as synchronous um, messaging. These are just a good example of some of the types of instant messaging you might want to use. Uh, but this is a really fluid, um, fluid area. So when I started doing these, uh, and I, I'm generally interviewing students, they often have, they had Skype accounts and they knew what Skype was and they were quite happy to use Skype. Nowadays, if I mention Skype to students, you know, they, they don't have a clue, they, they've moved on. Um, all of those are possible. One thing that is worth considering that I'm not going to talk about is uh, encryption of data and data protection. And that's something that I think is worth talking to your own like ethics team and, and IT team. So this is a typical uh, view, uh, you'll recognise it as coming from WhatsApp, um, but it has three key features that are really useful to think about for all text-based communication. So the first at the top there is a typing indicator. So obviously with text-based communication you don't see the other person, so there's no, um, there's no body language, but what you do have is an indication that somebody is typing and that's really useful because you get that sense of connection and that sense of feeling that you're both in the conversation at the same time. Um, you've also got the message box. Um, so when you're talking to someone um, with voice communication, you, you you hear, the other person hears every single word in a continuous flow. But of course, when you're text, text-based communication, you write a sentence, maybe a few sentences, uh, and then send that as a block of text. And that has particular implications for the way in which people respond and the way in which we must um, think about the, the data. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the option of emojis. And along with that, you've got GIFs and stickers and, and all sorts of other things. This is a really good way of expressing the, the emotions and the feelings that are not possible to express because you don't see the other person. And I think actually in some cases they go beyond what you can express with, with voice. You can actually express more um, more things. Um, so I think that's that's a really interesting addition that you get in text-based communications. So where does all of this fit in sort of qualitative interviews? Well, here are three key types of qualitative interviews. There are others, but we won't talk about those. Um, unstructured, semi-structured and structured. Now, in almost all the, the science, certainly science education papers that I've read, um, I think everyone almost without fail says it was a semi-structured interview. Um, but there are other types and they are worth considering. Um, so a structured interview, you plan your series of questions and you ask every single question and you, you stick to that and nothing else. Unstructured is completely the opposite and I'm actually doing a, a project at the moment where I'm doing unstructured interviews. Um, there's a sort of few starting questions but really Every, every, every interview is completely different and in that because that's because it depends on exactly um, what the experiences and are of the people that you're talking to. But most are semi-structured uh, and that means that you have a set of questions that you've defined but then depending on how the participant responds you will ask follow-up questions, you'll go off on tangents, you will talk about other things. But even within semi-structured interviews and, and papers don't normally to go into this, there's a whole range of ways in which you can approach this. And this will very much depend upon your own, um, your own biases, your own, just your own preferences as an interviewer. Um, and so you could be quite rigid 
um, in your approach. That is, you stick to the questions and the order of the questions that you have uh, defined. And if a, a participant starts talking about something else that you're going to talk about later, then you would say to them, oh, can we just come back to that later? And that's absolutely fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. My approach tends to be more of a sort of messy approach. So I prefer because it feels more like a real conversation and I let that, that I just let that happen. Um, so if somebody talks about something that I want to talk about at a later stage, I just let the conversation flow. The difficulty is that you have to be really aware of, of what you've been talking about and um, what you've covered and what you haven't covered. So those are the sort of main types of qualitative interviews. So where do text based interviews fit? This is purely my experience and I suspect that there are other ways of doing this and I suspect it depends very much on your participants. Um, mine have mainly been students and I have found that it sort of fits between structured and semi-structured. So I've had a set of questions that I've started off with and I have asked follow-up questions but it does feel like it's harder to have more of a conversation than you would perhaps normally have. Um, again it's just about being aware of what your biases are and how it how things have worked for you. I don't think there's any particular one right or, or, or wrong way of doing it. So what are the some of the reasons why you might want to think about doing text based interviews? So we're going to come on to talk about some of these in more detail, but um, it's a good way of it offers a choice to participants. So you might have participants who don't really want to talk to you either on the phone or um, in a video call uh, and you might prefer text based communication. It's a way of being able to talk to people in geographical locations wherever you, wherever you are in the world um, and it's particularly good for places where there's very poor internet connectivity. Um, so I talk to people around the world and actually the worst interview that I had in terms of connectivity was someone who was in Staffordshire in the moorlands of Staffordshire and it was um, it was not what I was expecting at all. So it, it doesn't, even in the UK, um, these things can happen. Um, and finally, there's no need for transcription. So transcription is time consuming. Uh, it's expensive if you pay someone else to do it. Um, and it always leads to biases. So there's always, um, there's, there's always biases come in to when you um, transcribe something because you have to make decisions about exactly how you, how you transcribe um, all the different aspects that there are to, to speech. Um, and of course that doesn't happen with text-based interviews, you've got exactly the text that you have defined. Um, I'm actually going to skip this slide because we're going to talk about disadvantages um, when you've had an opportunity to uh, have a go yourself. So I will welcome you into a breakout room task. There will be approximately four or five people, I think, depending um, in each breakout room. Um, so you can organise this how you like. Um, you can split up into smaller pairs and use the text chat if you, if you prefer, or you can stay as you are in the group and two people use the text chat um, to do an interview. And then we will let you know halfway through so that you can swap um, and have a different experience. These are suggested questions and we will send these into the breakout rooms. Um, so talking about experiences of being a research participant, which I'm pretty sure that everyone will have had some experience of, whether that's um, you know market research or, or being a participant in some sort of research project uh, or doing a survey online. So that but that's just a suggestion. You know, you can you can come up with your own topic. Um, really, I just want you to experience doing a text chat and thinking about what works and what's difficult um, and any other comments that you can think of. Um, Catherine, are you okay to sort out the breakout rooms? Yep, okay, so you should be technomagically taken off to a breakout room. Uh, we've got 105 people, so I will set up 26 of them. Text affords me time to think. So that's a really important point that you get time to think both as the interviewer and the interviewee. Um, Anna, can you see your slides now? Can't see them, I'm sorry. OK, do you have the right window up? Um, are, if you click on the Teams at the bottom, can you see two windows on your computer? Yes, but one's just the text chat. Um, okay, there's yeah. lots of people. 
and the other one. Yeah, I've got videos of lots of like you and everyone. Okay. That's interesting about being distracted. Um, someone said, yeah, I mean, often people are engaged in text chats, like with lots of different people at the same time. And that is, that's perfectly plausible. If you can manage to keep up, I think someone just said uh, that it is really hard. It can be really hard to keep up, particularly when there's lots of people. So in uh, one group, there was more like a focus interview feel going on. Um, if it's just the two of you, you should feel you've got enough time just to take your time and not feel rushed. Ah, oh, thanks, Catherine. I can see them now. If you want to take control, the next, then. Yeah, thanks. I take control. Right. Does anyone want to um, actually come in and say anything about their experiences? With the put your hand up. I don't know if I want to see it, but um, otherwise, just feel free to use the text chat. And I'll try and pick up some points as they come in. Yeah, so that's a really good point um, from Sarah Ann about missing out on, on body language and visual visual cues. And this comes back to, to the transcription. If you're not going to transcribe those visual cues, then in a way you've, you know, they're not part of the interview anyway. They're not part of you're going to be part of your analysis anyway. Does anyone have their hand up? Um, I don't, Catherine, I'm sorry, I don't know how, if I know how, if someone wants to say anything. No, we've got no hands up. So um, I think people are just happy using the, the text function. Excellent. Right, how about I talk a little bit about some of the things I've experienced and then we'll come back and if you know, I think you're going to help me summarise what was in some of these text uh, messages uh, so I can pick up on anything that I've missed. So we, it was quite a short experience, obviously, that we had. Um, one of the things that I think is really important in um, in all types of interviews, including face to face, is breaking the ice and finding a way to um, to really make a connection with someone so that you can have that relaxed conversation with them. Uh, and one of the things that I often do is talk about the weather. And <laughs> um, anyone who was in the the, the text um, chat that we were having before. Uh, the main thing started at, at, at 11. We noticed that quite a lot of the talk was about whether it's sunny or not. Um, one of the reasons that I, I talk about the weather is because I've, I'm often talking about to people who are in different locations. Um, and even when I'm talking to other people at, at Edinburgh, um, I actually live in Glasgow. So um, I've already been ribbed a little bit about the, the difference in the weather in, in Glasgow compared to Edinburgh. Um, so, but it's also a really nice way to get to know the participant. In, in this example, you can see um, I'm speaking to someone who comes from some other country, somewhere much warmer, but they've grown up on the south coast. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to get to know them, but also for me to form a connection with them because I was able to say, well, I've lived on the south coast as well. Um, and that's a really important part of developing like the beginning of the interview. Um, then I go into sort of the main official part about getting, getting started. Um, and for this, I tend to have pre-prepared text so that I can copy and paste it, because as some of you have noticed, it is quite time consuming to type um, a lot of words. Um, and at this point, I will try and remind people about that they can withdraw their consent at any time, um, anything about data protection. Particularly when I'm interviewing students, I will um, make sure that they, they know the expectations of them, because students will often worry about getting the, the right answer when there isn't the right answer. Um, so I, I, and for all the questions as well, I have them written out already so I can copy and paste, but I will then edit them so that they fit into the flow of the text once I'm actually, um, once I'm actually doing the interview. Um, a lot of people have already mentioned about body language. Um, that is a really, really difficult thing. How do you develop rapport with someone when you're not able to, you know, to see them? Um, and the, the first thing we've talked about is this, um, how do you indicate that you're listening to someone? So in a face to face interview or, or video conference, um, you know, you might be nodding along or you might be you know, smiling. You might even interject and say things like, oh, yes, yeah, I, you know, I understand. You can't do any of that. And there's this issue of if someone is typing and you can see that they've got this 
that is a typing indicator. Um, often people will type in one block and then they'll type another block and then another block. Um, as I understand it, the etiquette of text chat is that if someone's got the typing indicator, you just let them type and you don't sort of butt in. Um, but it can feel like a really long wait when you're doing a text based interview and you might feel like, well, I could just write, you know, that sounds really interesting. I think it does tend to break the flow of the text if you do that. And I think it is better to set the expectation at the beginning that you are just going to let them let them type. But then when it's my turn, I do say, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, uh, just so and then I ask the question just so that they know that I, I have been listening. Um, the other way of developing rapport is to find some way of, of making connections with people um, and this sort of idea of mutual disclosure. So um, as an interviewer, you have to be a little bit careful and decide how much you want to disclose. Um, but in this case, uh, my participant came from Vienna and I said, oh, well, I really like Vienna. And that again gave us that, that connection. The other thing that I tend to do is try and make sure they know that I'm uh, my background is in physics or in science, because otherwise it can look like I'm coming in as just as a qualitative researcher. Um, and I might not know anything about, about science. Um, and that gives you a very different type of interview. Um, they're much more willing to talk about sort of, uh, difficult concepts. Um, and then this is just very quickly um, an example of when I had something went wrong and there was a bit of a misunderstanding. Um, and this is about establishing um, expectations uh, about what you know that it is okay to just type um, and to take as long as that you, as long as you want and in, in and in future interviews I took this uh, and I made it much clearer at the beginning that that was my expectation. Um, does anyone want to come in and say anything now before we just finish up with the last two slides about sort of summing up? Um, is there any sort of themes that have come out of the text chat that uh, I should be picking up on? Um, we've got some nice discussion on using things like GIFs and emojis. Yes, that is. I think that's really, really interesting. Um, what, one of the things you need to be really careful of is that the other person ex understands what it is that you're talking about. Um, so one of the papers I read talked about how all participants commonly used LOL, you know, laughing out loud. Now, I'm, I'm never very up on these things, but it seems to me that that is much less in than it used to be, that people don't tend to use that as much. Um, and there's a lot of other um, internet sort of slang type things that are used, which um, you have to be careful that everyone knows what it is you're talking about. But I think the use of GIFs uh, can really add to what it is you're trying to say. Um, so I know a couple of people, a couple of people have already mentioned that reasons to think about text-based interviews are that it gives you time to uh, think. Um, particularly as the interviewer, you don't have to do quite so much multitasking. So you can go back and look at um, what people have said. You can even quote them and say, "Well, you said this earlier on. What did you mean by that? Can you explain that in a bit more detail?" It increases the diversity of participants potentially. So people who are shy or who have social anxiety. Um, I once had, uh, so I was doing a research project looking at how people were doing interactions in large based physics classes um, where students were asked to discuss things in small groups. Um, and I wanted a wide range of people and I offered text based interviews. And one student who I spoke to, uh, or text chatted to, um, said that he has a stammer. Um, and that really impacted on the way that he felt about doing interactions in physics classes. Um, and he wouldn't, I don't think, have spoken to me if the only option had been a video call or a, uh, um, a voice based call. So that that really opened up the option for talking to him. Um, we have a large cohort of Chinese students at the University of Edinburgh um, and often their English is good, but they have a strong accent. Um, and when I've interviewed that sort of student, they have been very keen to use text based um, interviews and that works a lot better um, for them. Um, you might have uh, sensitive topics and perhaps not so much in chemistry education, but you might be talking about accessibility or disability or um, uh, anything al along those sort of lines. And uh, text based interviews can feel safer place to, to do that sort of thing. Uh, and as we've talked about, there is no transcription. And finally, issues to think about, again, some of these things have been, have been coming up. Um, how to develop rapport, um, use of emojis, people have been talking about um, an internet slang and 
um, the, getting this balance right between encouraging participants to to answer, um, but also not sort of getting involved too much in breaking up the conversation. Um, we had a bit of a conversation in our breakout room about the possibility of editing, editing your answers um, before sending and also well in team you can edit them after you've sent them, which is really interesting. Um, and that brings up a whole load of issues, I think, about um, do you really want to hear what someone's like initial reaction is to something um, or is it actually more um, more real if they have had a chance to really think about what it is that they're saying and maybe they've edited it. Um, but maybe that's a more uh, accurate representation of what they really think. Either way, you sort of need to be aware that that's that that's a possibility. Um, and finally, I think we've talked about the, the length of the interviewing. It is slower to talk to type than it is to talk. Um, the interviews that I've done tend to be um, half as many words, maybe two thirds of as many words um, when they're text chat interviews. Uh, and it might be that people are just saying things more concisely. I mean, when we talk, we do tend to waffle quite a lot. At least people in interviews tend to waffle. Um, and so maybe that's not a problem. But again, it might be that it actually takes lo takes longer. And so long as you're aware of that and you make your expectations clear to the person that you're talking to, they're normally quite happy um, to do that. Any other final points? I will just put up the final slide in case anyone wants to follow up on any of these references and I will be around and happy to chat to anyone in more detail. Some nice comments generally in the chat um, about things like uh, a really good question actually, have you encountered difficulties with terminology and spelling? Um, Interestingly, lots of people's spelling is very bad. Um, we, uh, you know, you're just typing quickly and, and it doesn't and you just it, you don't worry about it. So I don't think anyone worries about it. I don't think I've had a problem with understanding what they're saying. Is that what you meant in terms of terminology? Um, uh, scientific words and things, if it's a more technical type chat. Um, I don't think I've come across that, but I am normally talking about people's experiences of like interactions or um, clicker questions or technology or something. So I don't think I've had too many of that, um, but that could be an issue. I can, I can see that if someone doesn't know how to spell something. Um, um, uh, some Another good question, is there an accessibility issue with people's typing speed? Yes, I mean, what I tend to do is offer people an like the option so it's not there's only one option so they can either do text chat or we can do it on the phone or we can have a video chat and i hope that that covers all like all accessibility issues so that everyone has the option to do it however they prefer to do it um i think well nowadays there's lots of options um if you do it on your phone you can use the microphone and actually speak in and that will create it as text um so that is that is an option if um typing is difficult particularly for, for you and you still want to do it as a, as a text chat. Um, alternatively, you know, there's no reason why there's any time scale on this. You know, if someone is slow at typing, then they can just take their time. Um, so long as so long as you know, everyone knows that that's OK and people relax and, you know, there's no pressure on them. That's really interesting comments about made managing social anxiety and etiquette easier. And, and I think that that's why a lot of students, when I've offered it, have, have taken up on, on this issue. OK, um, I think we'll stop there and move on. Um, thank you very much, Anna. That was a fascinating talk and really, really useful for planning things. There are a few more questions in the chat and comments that you can review, obviously, in your own time. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. It's lovely to be part of my stuff. Hi, Catherine. Uh, should I share my slides? Uh, yes. Um, excellent. I, um, I completely forgot that you were sharing your own slides there for a moment. I'm just going to pop your slides in the chat. And while you're getting set up, um, I can do your introduction. So. Okay, let's do slides first. <laughs>